Let's take another look at Newton's second law. So Newton was English, but he wrote his laws in Latin. Because whenever you write something or say something in Latin, it seems much more important. Let me give you an example. Now it's time for stultus physica dolus. See, that sounds better, right? So when uh, he wrote his laws in Latin, it translates actually to just the change in motion, not acceleration. It doesn't specifically say anything about acceleration. There's just sort of a vague reference to the quality of the motion. Of course, the human language is irrelevant. We know how to write it mathematically. It's that the sum of the forces on an object equals mass times acceleration. But let's see what we can do with that. We could say that's equal to mass, and we now know what acceleration is. It's the change in velocity over the change in time. And let's see. This is a change in velocity. Velocity, the final velocity minus the initial velocity, subtracted as vectors. Mass is constant. So we're going to say since mass is constant, you could basically put the mass inside the delta. The change in v, or you could just go ahead and bring them m in and say it's equal to the delta of m times v, delta t. And of course, what is that? That's the momentum. So another way to write Newton's second law is that the sum of the forces equals the change in p, the change in momentum per unit time. And you could even argue that's really what he meant. Because momentum is really sort of the, the amount of motion. It includes both the mass that, remember, was related to kinetic energy, and it includes the velocity, which is, of course, how you describe the motion. So you could say um, the net force on an object If Newton were writing it today in English, in American English, the net force on an object equals the rate of change of momentum. So we're going to use this idea as we continue.